Hello, welcome to the video for what is material, the clamp node. I've gone ahead and created this quick little example here and let's see what the clamp node does. So we have an emissive color and it's red. Now emissives can be overdriven. So our red here, for example, with a value of one, which is gonna be our full red, it's gonna show as red. But if we were to overdrive this, for example, to a 10, not 110, we're gonna see it start to emit and look like it's glowing. So it gives us this nice glow effect. But let's say we don't want this. Well, we can use a clamp node to clamp the minimum and maximum values of an input. So here's our minimum, sorry, here's our clamp node by default. What you're gonna see is an input, which is gonna be required, a minimum and maximum, which are not required and you can actually set them inside the node itself and then an output, which is our output. Looking at our parameters, you find the different clamp modes and you find your minimum and your maximum. Now our clamp modes are pretty simple. The default clamp means it will clamp the minimum and maximum. If you put in a value below the minimum, it's gonna make it the minimum. If you put in a value above the maximum, it's gonna make it the maximum. If you change this to either min or max, it's only gonna clamp that value. So a clamp min means it's only gonna clamp the minimum and let the maximum go free. If you clamp maximum, it's gonna let the maximum be clamped and let the minimum go free. So by default, we're just gonna leave this as clamp. We wanna clamp the top and the bottom. So how does it actually work? Well, this is simple. Let's take this overblown red, pipe it into our clamp and put it back out into our emissive. And we're gonna see our more natural solid red. We're taking this value of 10, 0, 0, piping it through our clamp. Our clamp is saying, hey, the 10 value is above our maximum default, put it back down to one, and then our output is gonna be a one, zero, zero. So that's how our clamp node works. Let's see it in another example. So let's say we have this overblown 10 value here, and we pipe it into our multiply here. And let's actually make this a yellow. Let's make this a very bright yellow. Let's unhook it from our clamp and we'll plug it into our missive. And this is what we're gonna end up with. We're gonna take this 10, 10, zero and multiply it by zero, four, one, which if you're using multiply node 10 times zero, we get a zero, 10 times four is a 40, and then zero times one is zero. So we're actually getting 40 on our green here. Now, you may be doing some other math operations here, adding some tracking, throwing in some noise, some different textures, and it could lead to you just having some massively huge values like this. We're 40 for green, it's way too much. That's what our clamp node's for. Just go ahead and take your output, slap it into your clamp node, and then you're gonna get something more reasonable, which is our solid green color. So, clamp nodes are good if you wanna make sure things don't get overblown or don't get too much. I mean, if you're multiplying too many times, you might push everything towards your white value when you want them to be within a more realistic value. It's also useful if you don't want things too dark, just make a minimum that's not zero, or too bright, make a maximum that's not one. It can also give you some really weird effects by not allowing certain color values or certain color ranges. Maybe clamp it to, you know, something like a 0.3 and a 0.7 so you actually don't have your highs and your lows and you get these washed out colors for everything so that's what our clamp node does it's useful for making sure things aren't too small or too big if you have any questions or comments please feel free to leave them below